Well, greetings again. How in the world are you? Say, I'm not of the world, but I am in the world. That's right. Now, you know, if God lets you down, you're the first person ever, ever in the history of man that could say that. Write a book. (laughs) And we'll buy it. That's right. (laughs) Because perfect love Mm. never fails. Mm-hmm. Now, you might fail perfect love, but perfect love will never fail you. Mm-hmm. Let's think about that for a minute. Okay. <laughs> think about that. Now, on the way over here, we were talking about uh, a particular family that uh, the, the child was, her, her, her uh, the person was married, and uh, the, there was, they were, Hadn't been married that long, and her husband had left and mm-hmm. had another girlfriend for uh, for a while, and it looked like the whole thing was over. Right, whole thing was over. Uh, I, I I said to this person, I said, well, it, it looks to me like you could put a fork in this deal because it's done. I don't know what else to say. I prayed, I've done, I've blessed, I've this, and then uh, supernaturally. Mm-hmm. God touched him, came home, and the boy's friends told him, I can't believe, here's what they said, I can't believe that she forgave you. Wow. She couldn't have forgiven him unless love had entered. Now, now, if we got to understand how love never fails, Mm -hmm. and how we, if she would have given up, because he told her to give up. Right. Told her to give up. Said, go get a divorce because I don't want blah, 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 blah. Go, go on. Go do it. Wow. And she even said, okay. She even went and sought to, to, to do it. was actually, but God. Hmm, but God. And I'm not, hmm. I, you know her mama. Yeah. Her mama never ceased to, <laughs> yeah. to seek mm-hmm. God for her. Mm-hmm. And I know that the prayers of the intercessors, intercessors, please, please, please pray. We've talked about the edge of the church, the cutting edge of the church. Uh, you're a cutting edge. Mm-hmm. Intercessors are the ones that go before everybody. Absolutely. But they're there. They see the future. They mm-hmm. see. I call them seers. Mm-hmm. I, 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 they may not be a prophet, but they right. definitely mm-hmm. have the ability to see. see. Mm-hmm. And people say, let's go intercede. You don't just go intercede. Intercession mm-hmm. falls on you. Right. It, right. It'll fall on you when you live. When right. the least expect mm-hmm. fall on you in the airplane. Mm-hmm. That's true. yourself up with the blanket. Oh, that's Jesus, true. right here. Oh, God. Oh, I shot That's true. That's true. Yeah, yeah, it's happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was on the plane. We were going to Louisville. And uh, I had this this Bible here. And I was tra- I didn't know, but the preacher, we were going to go do a conference. And the preacher that was uh, we are going to do the conference with was sitting next to me. I didn't know. I had that big Bible out, and, I, and when I saw him get up to preach, I reckon, that's that brother, because we didn't talk much, you know. It wasn't that long of a drive, and of a flight. And so he says, I rode up here with the guy, and his Bible is bigger than my 357. <laughs> I like it. Your Bible, your Word of God that mm. says love, is bigger than any carnal weapon. Mm-hmm. You could ever hope or imagine all the smart bombs, mm-hmm. all the SEAL teams, all of the smart weapons, all of all. I've, boy, we have got some weapons. Mm-hmm. Boy, we tested weapons when Desert Storm happened. Right. Actually, it was Desert Shield first. Mm-hmm. That's when we first went in. When that happened, we got to test all the stuff we've been working on, and you saw pictures of the road, mm-hmm. that big highway where there was nothing but wrecked trucks. Right. And they perfected. All these smart weapons, all of the weapons known to man, all of them, are just fleshly compared to mm-hmm. a one intercessor. Mm-hmm. Now, what I want to do, I want to talk about Ephesians, but what I want you to do is kind of weave in, weave in and out of that okay. prayer okay. thing and tell us about your Keep ministry. I'll, I'll, my bad, my bad, my okay. bad. This is... I call him Marshall Dillon, but this is Apostle Dillon, and he's a dear, dear friend of ours, and he is involved with our church, and when he speaks, we listen. We love him very much, 
And uh, that's why we have him here today. And listen to him, because he sm- might speak right into your heart. Thank you, Pastor Michael. I just, I just kind of honor and a privilege uh, to be here uh, with you today and, uh, and to be with Pastor Mike. I always take uh, every uh, appointment serious because I know that this is a divine moment for uh, somebody that's watching. If you're watching, uh, it's just a setup from God. It's a divine appointment that God wants you to uh, hear what we're going to be sharing today because if you, were, if you will receive it, it will absolutely just transform your life. Uh, I am Apostle William Dillon. My ministry is based out of uh, Savannah, Georgia. Uh, as an apostolic voice, uh, the Lord just uh, sends me on assignments to different states, different regions, different areas. I'm a sent one with a sent word. And uh, when I release that word, people who hear it and receive it, uh, lives are just transformed and changed. It has nothing to do with me, but has everything to do um, to do um, with God. And uh, we were talking earlier, you had asked me about uh, about the power of love and about the situation with this um, particular family. One thing we have to understand about love, that love is not a feeling. Love's a choice. And, uh, and so uh, my wife, and Anita, and I have been married for 34. This, this year we'll be married 35 years. And, uh, and, and so, all of them were great and easy well, well, <laughs> and wonderful. You never had a problem. Ab- 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 absolutely not. I mean, the first five years, we tell people, the first five years was extremely, extremely intense. And uh, we just made a conscious decision because we didn't feel like we were in love every day because love is not a feeling, it's a choice. And so once we, we, we made that choice, uh, uh, then uh, love just took over. And you think about this young lady that forgave uh, her uh, her mm-hmm. husband for uh, uh, committing uh, adultery. Mm-hmm. Uh, you you just think, yeah, you think about that. with the girl. And then his friends told him, I can't believe she forgave you because forgiveness is powerful. Forgiveness is not for him. Forgiveness was for her because it set her free. Then when she was set free, then what she, what she did, she postured herself in this relationship to choose to love, and, to love him and stay committed to him. And that's, uh, that's the reason God gave them a miracle. She made the she made the choice and and he made the choice too. But God just supernaturally intervened. So with all that said, we're just excited that you're here with us today, and pray that you will just listen with the ear of the Spirit, because what he and I were talk about, Pastor Michael and I were talk about today, you cannot hear with a natural ear. You have to hear it with the ear of the Spirit. And if you'll hear it with the ear of the Spirit, then you'll get the revelation that God wants you to get. And again, it will absolutely just transform your life. God's in love with you, and he can't help himself. Can't help himself. Can't help himself. I, I talk about God's weak spot. Mm, yeah. You know, God's got a weak spot. Yeah. Mm. And it, someone said, how can you say God's got a weak spot? Because any time you say, Lord, I've sinned, forgive me. Mm-hmm. He says, okay, okay, back off, mm-hmm. back off. Mm-hmm. No judgment. I don't need to get his attention. That's I've got right. It. That's right. And, and the only thing, the love of, because trouble comes when we get off the path, it's to get us back on the path. There's a certain pastor uh, that I went, I was a part of the church. Uh, uh, and if I called his name, f- folks would know it. But mm-hmm. for reasons that I don't, I shouldn't, I won't. Uh, he, his doctrine got off. And he got into the doctrine of uh, um, that if we're all we're all sons of God, so we really don't need Jesus because yeah. as He is, so are we. So mm-hmm. I, I'm a savior. I'm a mm-hmm. I, I'm a sav- And uh, and then he graduated from that to we believed in the the lie of the immaculate conception. Wow! And it just really got. Our, and then he suddenly died. Mm. And I believe with all my heart that the the love of God. The love of God took him out before the enemy took him. Right, out. right. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, now that, it, that I couldn't say that his, if I said that to someone that were part of his church family, mm-hmm. uh, they would probably contend with me about that. But uh, that really struck a chord with me. That God loves us so much; mm-hmm. He loves us enough to kill us. Right, right. He mm-hmm. don't. Can, can you imagine us? Mm-hmm. I was talking to. My little Jamie about this last night. 
wouldn't you hate have to be God mm. and judge someone to hell for mm. eternity? Mm. Ah, what a hard mm -hmm. thing. You know for how he, he gave his son for us. Mm -hmm. Gave his son for us. That we should all, for right. the perfect will of God, that we should all be saved. Mm -hmm. And then if we don't make the throne of Jesus, we make the white throne. We don't want that throne. Mm -hmm. And God's going to say, Wow. The second death. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ah, it's got... Mm -hmm. In my heart, if you... Sometimes we do things to bring God... We, I want to say bring us up to God's level, but it's really bringing mm -hmm. God down mm -hmm. to our level that we can under, have right, an understanding right. of God. Right, So we can more relate. And I, I tell this story often. and it, uh, I tell this story about... I'll say, I'll say this word. I'll go... Uh, okay, I need a war. Give me a war. Someone would say, Korean War. Okay, Korean War. Give me a name. I get Oh, Jacob. Okay, we got Jacob's Korean War. Now, Jacob's a good boy at home. Mm -hmm. Good boy. Good. He didn't go to church. He never said the sinner's prayer. But uh, he wasn't a bad person, but he wasn't born again. Right. When, now, here they are in the middle of, what was the war? And they yelled the Korean mm -hmm. War. And a grenade came in the tent. And before anyone thought about it, Jacob jumped on that grenade and died for his brothers. Where does his soul go? Mm -hmm. Well, now, according to the Word, mm -hmm. it says, unless you confess with your Lord, mm -hmm. with your mouth, the Lord Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. that you're, mm -hmm. you, Romans you. 10, 9 and 10, mm -hmm. you're not going to be saved. And I, I, But then we have the scripture of uh, a greater love than this that had no Amen. man to lay down his life for one another. So, aren't you glad you don't have to judge that stuff? <laughs> Yeah, you mm -hmm. don't have to judge. I, 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 I say that don't wait for a grenade to roll in the tent. Absolutely. <laughs> OK, just do it now. Absolutely. Do it now. OK, Absolutely. while the bullets are over your head, not in the tent. Absolutely. Uh, but but the facts are God is so good. Mm -hmm. I've heard testimonies of people that were on the way to hell and God intercepted and sent them back. And now mm -hmm. they're preachers. You've right. heard those stories. Right. Too. So I, we don't know. And mm -hmm. I'm not saying Please hear me well. Mm -hmm. The blood of man doesn't atone for nothing. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's the blood of Jesus only, not the blood of goats, not the blood of chickens, not the blood of bulls, but the blood of Jesus. We're talking about the love of God who gave the blood of Jesus for us. That's right. Because John 3, uh, we know John 3, 16, but I love uh, verse 17 too. It says, For God sent His Son in the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Because the sinners were already condemned. And, and, and thank God that, uh, you know, that God knew that. So He, out of love, now, now I love Romans 5 and 8, He says that, For God commendeth His love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So uh, love takes, you know, love takes risk. God took a risk in loving us because he took the risk of maybe thinking we'll, we, we won't love him back. But he said, I love them enough. I'm going to take the risk. Because the Bible says, I think I read somewhere. <laughs> the Bible said he first loved us. The first loved us. He ab first ab loved absolutely. Us. Okay, now, this isn't a trick question. Okay. <laughs> but what do you do with the scripture, John 17, mm -hmm. that Jesus says, uh, I I don't pray for everybody, mm -hmm. just those that you gave me. Mm -hmm. What do you do with that? Well, I think you 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 know earlier you were talking about intercessors. You were no. talking about intercessors. I believe what he sent those that you gave me, those who are born again. You know, Jesus picks us up by the Spirit, so we're one with him in the Spirit, and so uh, he's at the right hand of the Father. Uh, you know, interceding for us. And I think it's the, it's the born. It's not that he doesn't love the others. He lo he loves them, but the one the ones that are born again, they're they're he picks them up by the spirit, and and he uh, he intercedes for them. He knows them because they have an intimate relationship. If I'm understanding the question right, that that, well, that that's how that's how I perceive it. Because we've got whosoever ever right, yeah, yes, and yes, we're yeah, whosoever. yeah, yeah. Because he's because what he's saying, I can only pray for I can I, I can only intercede for those who are the born whosoever. again. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> the whosoever. Yeah, that's yeah. who he's praying yeah, for. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. what he's saying. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. praying for the whosoever. Mm -hmm. That's a I go, I'll go back to uh, that. My he's a high priest of uh, right. confession on mm -hmm. confession. That, he's interceding right. for those because we've we've chosen him. Right. Yeah. So it, it was like I was telling you. 
uh, about being uh, uh, right now a lot of our mainline uh, cutting edge churches are really under uh, uh, their cabinet if you will mm-hmm. their 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 cadre is under a, 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 a t- an assault right now. right and uh, what I said when I was praying with the intercessors, mm-hmm. just as a matter of fact, it was last night. Mm-hmm. I said, Lord, uh, just like we're talking about Ephesians, right. I said, Lord, you know, Paul prayed, hard pressed, not crushed, mm-hmm. perplexed, not in despair, uh, persecuted, not mm-hmm. forsaken. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, we're under that. I mm-hmm. pray for all of us that are under that. And Lord, I know that you. He he was more he had more responsibility than we have mm-hmm. because he didn't know he was right because his assignment yeah. you know mm-hmm. 60 A.D. was when uh-huh. Ephesians and Colossians mm-hmm. were written he was mm-hmm. in jail he didn't mm-hmm. know that was going to be Bible he mm-hmm. was writing to the church yeah but see God had a plan ooh mm-hmm. there's books that God has asked you to write mm-hmm. I'm hearing it right now speak Alan, it Pastor Alan Alan yes. Write the book. Write the book. Go pick the pen up. I'm talking to me too. I'm talking to me too. See, I never preach to nobody without preaching to me because if I can't preach to you without preaching to me, I can't preach with passion. See? Mm-hmm. And if you can't follow passion, you can't. Mm-hmm. If someone's got, don't have passion, and you ain't going to follow them. Come mm-hmm. on, Sam. You're listening to me. <laughs> we're passionate about yeah. it. Jesus was passionate about us. Mm-hmm. If Jesus was, God is passionate. Mm-hmm. That when he said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Please. Mm-hmm. They said, what is that? Someone said lightning. Someone said uh, uh, angel spoke. Someone said thunder. Mm-hmm. And she, God said, oh, this is my beloved son mm-hmm. and I'm proud of him. Mm-hmm. Look at him. Look yeah. at him. What John right. say? I can't even touch his sandals. <laughs> I know. That's right. you know we talked about the sandals, and who, uh, when you give up the sandal, you give up your right. Mm-hmm. So that's he good. said, "I don't have the right." Yeah, that's good. I don't have the right. That's good. That Jesus mm-hmm. said. That's why he was he was mm-hmm. crucified without his shoes on. Yeah, wow. He was crucified naked. Wow. You wow. know we don't see that. Mm-hmm. Thank God we don't right. see a naked Jesus. Right. Right. Uh, but he mm-hmm. was crucified. Wow. wow. Without any clothes on. Wow. Mm-hmm. He, he bore our shame. Can sure you imagine did. that? Sure did. Mm-hmm. Can you be imagining mm-hmm. that? And I guarantee you, it, he wasn't on the set. I wish I'd have been in better shape. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I should have done more yeah. shit you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, he was saying, Lord, forgive them. They know not what they do. That's love. That's oh, the epitome of love. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. That's the epitome I'm of love. the Holy Ghost right That's now. the epitome of love. Thank you, Jesus. Mm-hmm. Thank for he so loved us, my brother. It's okay. I'm sorry. Don't tear up all the stuff now, brother. <laughs> <laughs> no, go ahead. You, you go ahead. I'll fix it. it. Now, listen. Uh, let's flip over here to this. I'm in Ephesians 2. It says, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Do you know grace always comes before peace? Wow. Because wow. you can't have peace without grace. Mm-hmm. That's good. That's good. Mm-hmm. What's grace do? Mm-hmm. It's, it empowers us. You don't have to follow the six hundred nineteen right. or six hundred and thirteen mm-hmm. laws. Mm-hmm. Uh, no way. Uh, uh, no way. No way. No mm-hmm. way. I was part of a of a particular. Well, I wasn't part of it, but I was part of a church that the pastor came out of a particular uh, denomination that uh, held true to the women couldn't wear makeup mm-hmm. and uh, the men could look like peacocks. Right back. But the, the women couldn't wear makeup, had to wear long, sh- you know, dresses mm-hmm. and turtlenecks and stuff. And uh, they, but they wore, wore a suit that was right. Mm-hmm. not wall wool. It was mm-hmm. Daycron and wool mm-hmm. and rayon. And that's breaking the law mm-hmm. right there. Wow. And, and just, just those little things right. like Jesus said, if you break one, you break them all. Mm-hmm. And the only way we can have peace mm-hmm. is through grace. Right through grace. It's through grace. Wow. So every time we pray, every time we wake up, thank you for the grace. Right. Mm-hmm. Thank you for the grace. Mm-hmm. What, to me, what's so what's so powerful about the book of Ephesians is that we have to go, we'd have to go to Acts chapter twenty because in Acts chapter twenty, Paul is talking about how he is um, he was in Ephesus, how he was calling the elders and the faithful followers of Jesus, uh, and he was speaking to 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 the church in in Ephesians. And this is what he said. He knew he knew that his time of departure was, was drawing close. He knew he was going to he was going to be transitioning. He was going to be leaving. He said, but before I do, he, he said, uh, he said, I got to make sure that I uh, that I put enough word in you 
So he, because this is what he said, he said, I want you to know that after I leave, he said, the wolves are coming. He said, they're going to come in. And he, and he said, you're going to have to have enough word on the inside of you. So when the wolves come, that you'll be able to discern the wolves. And they will not defeat God's purpose and God's plan for, for, for this church and for, and for this body. So my, my take on it is just, Paul was just telling him to defend the word and defeat the wolves. But then he, when he began to write to the Ephesians, this, the first chapter is really telling the believers who they are and whose they are. Because, Pastor, we do have an identity crisis in the church. There's an identity crisis in the church. People, are, you know, people don't know who they are or whose uh, they are. And when the wolves come, they don't come in as wolves. They come in in sheep's clothing. And we have to have enough word. My concern today uh, as an apostolic voice in the church is that there's too many people in the church that don't have enough word in, in, in their life. And that's the reason you were talking about the one pastor or the one that you were uh, associated right, with right. that got deceived or pulled off. You know what I'm saying? Pulled, pulled Good, away. Good, he was a great man. Yeah. And that's why it's important that, that the Word of God be our foundation. So when... so when, uh, yeah, that, But you know what? He started allowing uh, compromise. Well, that's... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Compromise. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Compromise. I would remember... Because... Uh, all, all my heroes would come there to right. preach, and I would go shopping. You know, mm-hmm. I would love them. Go shopping with you know my heroes, uh, and uh, we'd go to Galleria, and I would see him doing, saying things uh, that was off color right. about uh, 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 you know the, the 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 clerks and right. the pretty girls. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and I started getting a register, and mm-hmm. then other things started coming yeah, in, too. Yeah, you just saw that. Uh, mm-hmm. And, and I, I, it's, the, it's the, what's it? Beware of the little mm-hmm. foxes. The little foxes that spoil the, spoil the vine, yeah. Spoil the mm-hmm. vine. So mm-hmm. it's, not, it's not that compromise is uh, evil. It's compromise will... St- We'll throw you down. Right. Yes, there are compromises that are evil. Right. But maybe, like for example, when I got born again, I was a musician. God took me off all, all music. Wow. I couldn't hear any music wow. at all. Wow. Uh, because He wanted to beat Egypt out of me, mm-hmm. so to speak. Right. And I couldn't watch any movies. I didn't watch any movies. I remember Braveheart came out, and uh, Rick Joyner was talking about Braveheart, preaching yeah. about William Wallace. Mm-hmm. I said, Jesus, that's an R-rated show. How come I can't go see that? He said, mm-hmm. I never told you you couldn't go to the movies. Wow. I never told you you couldn't go. So a lot of the, a lot of, a lot of the duress we want to put on each other, but remember this, and I'm going to flip it to you. Okay. Grace to you mm-hmm. and peace from God our Father. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Now, the, the Amplified Bible says, may, may grace, God's unmerited favor, unmerited. and spiritual peace, which means peace with God, and harmony, unity, and undisturbedness, be yours from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. So, so, when we're, so when we're living um, uh, by, by grace, when we're living by the love of God, there will be a unity and a harmony and an undisturbedness in our life. That spirit, I'm telling you, and, and, and I sound a little bit repetitious today, but it all goes back to our born-again spirit. Come on, it's somebody. our spirit that will be in unity with God. It's a, we are spirit that will be at peace. My spirit will not be disturbed. Let's talk about unity. And uh, yeah, come y- on, y- come y- on. Well, y- well, unity. I mean, uh, uh, the Bible said, "How can two walk together except they be uh, in, in agreement, agreement or in or in uh, unity?" Or in unity. So, so when so it's when I walk, when my life is congruent with the Word of God, or when my life is in agreement with the Word of God, then not only will I have unity uh, and, and, and peace. And in harmony in my spirit, but I'll have I'll have unity and peace and um, and quietness in my in my mind. What about uh, Psalm 131 or 133? I think it is. It is good mm. that my brethren dwell together in in uh, in, unity. In, in unity. And he says, "My brethren." Right, right. And, and, and you know when in James when he says brothers, mm-hmm. he he says brothers. There's a separation there. Right. W- 
there's a separation mm -hmm. between us and I don't want to say them, mm -hmm. but us and the unregenerated soul. Right, right, right. See, I, I believe when I, when I recognize you, when I recognize you as my brethren, I mean that means I can I can discern who you are by the Spirit. Then I can discern that you and I are one in the Spirit, and we can even though we may have differences, there'll be unity and there'll be peace in our relationship because there is that we're united by the Spirit. Does that make sense? You understand what I'm it saying? Absolutely we have, makes so sense. We have, so we have to know people. You know, we, we can know ever, you know, we can know everybody after the flesh, but we really need to know people after the spirit. If we know people after the spirit, then I believe that's where the harmony, you know, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together, together, together in, in, in It's in like unity. the oil, oil. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. The anointing that mm -hmm. runs on Aaron's mm -hmm. beard. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. the thing about Aaron's beard, you got to understand, they cut, they cut their beard straight across. Wow. Mm -hmm. It wasn't in a point like the, because mm -hmm. they right, were commanded they right, not yeah. to do that. Mm -hmm. So when the oil ran down, it ran mm -hmm. down over his whole mm -hmm. body. Mm -hmm. So the whole house is anointed. Right, wow. The whole house is anointed. <laughs> you understand? Yeah, that? and this is how you know that you're walking in harmony and peace it, 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 and it's in, in, with God and with one another because cause he said it brings refreshing. You know what I'm saying? It's, going, it's like a refreshing. Uh, and and it, then he said, it's, it's, it, in there, God commands the blessing. It, it's just there's like, a commanded blessing and, and, when and there's unity. And when uh, uh, you, you came by and, and y'all picked me up, said, I said, y'all, that's right, this is Texas. <laughs> <laughs> and y'all picked me up. I, I felt a refreshing. Even though Miss Baker was talking, I couldn't hear her because I'm in the back. I could see her little lips moving. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, there was a fresh, right, right, refreshing. Right. And when you, we need to bring that refreshing. Right, right. Now I was I was at the VA yesterday. I was at the VA, and I, this this lady uh, had came by. She was a nurse, and I said to her, I said, "You love Jesus, don't you?" She just broke down. Wow. Said, How did you know that? Wow. Said, Obviously, she's going through a hard time. Wow. I just held her and patted her. Wow. And we just loved on her. And it, mm. it's just, it's the love of God. Yeah, absolutely. It's the love of God. Powerful, powerful. Mm. Powerful, love of God. Absolutely. Now, now, let's read this scripture. Blessed be oh, I love this. the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with some spiritual blessings. No, with all. Oh, you sure? Yes, with all. Oh, really? It is, does say every day.